Hey, when you're living off of your uh, battery bank like we are right now, it's your primary source of energy out here in the remote areas that we like to boondock. It's great to have more than one way to recharge your battery bank when it gets low. Now, solar for us is our primary way to recharge the batteries. It works really, really well most of the time, but it's not always sunny, so our secondary method is to actually use our engine's alternator in our motorhome, and uh, we also have a DC to DC charger connected to it, which allows us to recharge the lithium batteries that way. So I wanna walk you through that setup and show you some of the components and why uh, I set it up the way that I did, and hopefully it'll help you out setting up your own system and give you some ideas. So let's get right to it. So why do I need a DC to DC charger in the first place? Well, my primary concern here is to actually make sure that my lithium batteries get properly charged when they need to be charged. And my second priority is actually to protect the alternator in the chassis. The lithium batteries can actually take as much current as you throw at them, which is not what I want. Since this particular model is able to limit the amount of current, it's never going to have more than 20 amps being drawn from the engine at uh, any time. So that's going to protect my alternator from getting overloaded because I'm just using my stock alternator that uh, came with my Ford E450 chassis. I don't want to install a second alternator or, uh, or a bigger alternator. I just want to use what I have. Now I went ahead with, uh, with Renogy. Uh, they have uh, a 20 amp model, which is the one that I'm using. It's going to limit it to 20 amps. And there's also a 40 amp model and I believe a, a 60 amp model. Now those are maximum uh, amperages that's going to come out of those particular chargers. Now there are other ones. I think Sterling is another brand. They're more expensive. And I think uh, Victron even has one now. I've been using this, uh, this Renogy one primarily while I'm driving and sometimes if we're camped, if it's been raining for a while and I just wanna run the engine for a little while and get some, get some juice in the battery bank. Well, most folks using a DC to DC charger are probably gonna have it tied in to their ignition so that it automatically turns on whenever the engine's running. But that's not what I wanted because while I'm driving, solar's still my primary uh, means of, of charging the battery, but I wanted to be able to, to turn the DC to DC charger on and off at will. So mine's set up a little bit differently in that I don't have it tied into the ignition uh, voltage. I have it tied to this uh, switch down here, which used to be my emergency start switch, but I replaced it. And I can, while I'm driving, I can, I can turn on the DC charger at will and turn it off when I want to. Because my primary goal here is still to protect the alternator and only use the DC charger when I actually need it. Now, in order to figure out what my state of charge is of the batteries while I'm doing that, I have this, uh, this gauge here, which is tied into the house battery voltage. So I can tell based on the voltage level what the state of charge is for the lithium batteries because the way the the charging curve for lithium batteries goes is that it stays pretty constant say at 13 2 13 3 13 5 and then right at the end it starts to spike up to 14.6 so it's right at the very end of that charging cycle so i know once it gets up to 14.4 5 six that at that point the lithium batteries are charged. So let me show you how this whole system is connected together and uh, and we'll start under the hood. Now under the hood here I already had a connection between the house battery bank and the chassis battery which you know the alternator is also connected to and that went through this uh, this solenoid which was connected to a switch in the same location as that other switch I just showed you. Now what that would do is you'd be able to basically hit a switch 
that was an instantaneous switch you had to hold it in and it would join the two battery systems if you ever needed to jump the two say to start your generator or maybe your chassis battery is dead you can use your house batteries to uh, to jump the house battery but I really never needed it much and now that I don't have a generator I definitely don't need it now the uh, the DC to DC converter is going to handle the switching of that connection between the house and the chassis uh, battery system so I just removed that uh, solenoid here and I, and I connected the two just using a new uh, post and it's just on the positive connection because the uh, the negative connection from the battery and the chassis still goes to the uh, the frame of the RV. The change here is is essentially that it's now a one-way flow of current from the uh, chassis electrical system to the house battery system but before it was it actually could go both ways you know I could connect both together depending upon you know what the needs were now I routed that battery cable from the engine compartment into this compartment here which is where the DC to DC charger lives and I connected it to a bus fuse that's a 30 amp fuse coming from the alternator because I don't want it to go any more than 20 so a 30 amp fuse would do the trick now from there on the other end of the fuse I tied it to a, a six gauge cable that goes into the back of the DC to DC charger the input now the negative uh, component of the input for the charger actually is tied in from the chassis now the outputs of the DC charger come out of the front here so this is where I have a, a positive and the negative tied right into the front here and that's a six gauge cable that runs all the way back to the uh, battery compartment and a bus bar there that ties right into the positive and negative side of the house batteries on the front of the DC charger here there are five uh, little dip switch settings that you use to set the type of battery that you have and I screwed this up at first because uh, the on setting is actually down I normally would think that the on would be up so I had them backwards and the documentation actually is a little wrong so you have to kind of look up what the appropriate settings were for lithium but we figured it out and what it was is that it's uh, one is off five is off two three and four are on now I, like I said I screwed this up and I was helping a friend uh, Jared uh, set his up and he said hey it looks a little backwards than what I thought it would be so he was totally right and uh, mine was all messed up so thanks Jared for setting me straight but it wasn't a big deal on my end because I normally control it manually anyway by switching it on and off so that's where you set the battery chemistry and the third thing here is this uh, this lead that goes into this uh, 12 volt input and that's what actually switches the unit on and off now typically uh, you'd set this up to connect to your ignition and so when you're you fire up the uh, the engine it powers on the DC charger but in my case I have it switched uh, using that switch over in the cab now if you want to charge your batteries at a higher rate than uh, the 20 amps that I'm set up to, to charge then you're gonna have to choose a DC to DC charger that meets that rating you can go up to 40 amps 60 even higher in many cases but I really wasn't sure what the maximum output of my alternator really is so if you happen to know that for a Ford V10 uh, chassis uh, let me know I think it might be 90 amps but I really don't know what the stock uh, alternator is set up to output but if you uh, have a setup using uh, a DC to DC charger I'd love to know what your experiences are and if you don't and you're looking into something like this I hope I answered some of your questions and uh, if you got something out of this give it a give the video a thumbs up and uh, leave any comments and questions below you know what to do I'll see you in the next one take it easy